Hello, advanced algebra students. I just got done teaching classes for the day and I'm gonna record one more video for you just to get another one in the bank, so to speak. Um, today, we are going to finish our notes for our advanced algebra book, chapter one. So we are gonna do uh, section 1.7 and the topic is solving linear systems using matrices. So solving linear systems with matrices. Now, in order to solve linear systems using matrices, we're gonna have two basic fundamental ways we do it. Um, one is using something called reduced row echelon form by hand. The other is using reduced row echelon form with a calculator. So I'm sure by this point I've already sent out messages in the stream, probably even an email to you and told you in person in class, but you are going to need a calculator, a graphing calculator, to do some of the problems in the cell homework assignment. Now, because using the calculator is really hard to convey over this camera, I am going to put directions for the calculator type problems in the stream, and I'm also going to go over them with you in class but it will be vital that you have your own graphing calculator and that you have it with you. Without the graphing calculator, you'll end up having to do all the work by hand uh, and that would be not practical in a test taking situation. It would be unlikely you would be able to finish your test in time. So a graphing calculator is a required part of being in this class and it is something you're expected to have. That being said, I know that um, when I got my kids' calculators, um, they, you know, we often had to make a choice. I remember one year asking my oldest son, would you like new soccer shoes or a graphing calculator? He had to kind of make the choice because I couldn't necessarily get both at the same time. Um, so, you know, I know that sometimes it is a matter of making it a priority. Other times what you can do is just get a used calculator. Um, they are available oftentimes, I've heard on Craigslist, used graphing calculators for like 20 or $25, so that's not as much as a hit. But the, the new ones are a pretty substantial hit. They're typically maybe $100 on sale and up to $130, $140, $150 not on sale. So uh, it's, it is not a small purchase, but it is something that you're gonna need to have one way or another to do most of the problems in this section of our book. And we will also need a graphing calculator in future sections as well. So it's just a good idea to get one. All right, so I'm going to do three examples and they are all going to be solving a linear system using matrices and they're all going to be doing this by hand. Uh, this video will not contain examples using the calculator. All right, so let's go ahead and write down our system. 3x minus 2y equals 25 and 2x plus 5y equals 4. Now it is going to be essential that you understand reduced row echelon form for our upcoming test. I will either be asking you to solve a two by two system using reduced row echelon form, and I will check your steps by hand, or I will have you solve a three by three system using a calculator with reduced row echelon form. So I do want to tell you, of course, it's completely obvious that I could solve this system using graphing substitution or elimination if I wanted to. I do understand that in this particular example, um, using matrices is not going to be the most efficient way for solving, but it is um, an alternative method which is, which is important for you to know. All right, so the first step is to put your linear system um, into matrix form, and we're calling that the augmented matrix. So I'm going to draw a matrix, and I'm going to put all of my coefficients in with a little dotted line, and then I'm going to put my constants. So we talked about that at the end of our last notes, what the augmented matrix looks like for that system. Now, we're essentially going to do the same thing that we did when we were trying to eliminate variables with our three by three systems in our last notes. We want to take whatever steps we need to, to get the left side of this augmented matrix so that it says one, zero, zero, one. So um, I've got to find a way 
to eliminate um, this negative two right here. So I'm gonna make a little note on the left-hand side of my document here of what I'm doing. I'm gonna take five times equation one and two times equation two. So when I multiply every number in the top row by five, I get 15, negative 10, and 125. And then on the second line down, I'm going to get, when I double it, four, positive 10, and positive eight. Now, notice that the reason why I did this is because when I add these two equations together, negative 10 plus 10 becomes zero. So I'm gonna add the two equations and put the result in my top line. So 15 plus four is 19, negative 10 plus 10 is zero, and 125 plus eight is 133. And I'm gonna keep the bottom line as four, 10, and eight. Now I'm gonna make another note of what I'm going to do. I am going to divide everything I see by 19. So if I divide by 19 here, I get, uh, excuse me, I'm just gonna divide the top row by 19. So dividing by 19 in the top row, I'm gonna get one, zero, and seven. And I'm leaving the bottom row as four, 10, and eight. Now my goal was to get this matrix in the form one, zero for the first row, and zero, one for the second row. So I'm more than halfway there at this point. The next thing I'd like to do is to times this first row by negative four. Notice the reason I'm doing it is I want this four to cancel out. So I'm gonna write a little note here, times negative four. So my first row becomes negative four, zero, and then negative 28, and my second row is still four, 10, and eight. Now I understand this is a lot of work. This is definitely an algebra two section of the book, not algebra one. All right, and then I'm going to add the two equations together. When I do, I get negative four, zero, and negative 28. I'm gonna keep that row the way it is. And when I add the other two, I get 0, 10, and negative uh, 20. Now what I need to do on the first row is divide by negative 4. So I get 1, 0, and 7. So that was dividing by negative 4. And then in the second row, I'm dividing by 10. And I get 0, 1, negative 2. Now, when we solve this system using matrices, as we did here, this is called reduced row echelon form, this matrix is now in reduced row echelon form because the left-hand side, the coefficient part of my augmented matrix, has just ones and zeros in this format here where the ones form a diagonal going down from left to right. If I was gonna plug this back into more of an equation format, it would be one X plus zero Y equals seven, and zero X plus one Y equals negative two. In essence, it's telling me here, because zero times Y is just zero, that X is equal to seven, and here, zero times X just goes away also, and Y is negative two. So this first number here is going to be your X value, and the second number there is going to be your y value. Now, I do understand that this method is much less efficient than solving my syst uh, the system by elimination or substitution or graphing, um, but the purpose of doing this is really to teach you what reduced row echelon form is. Now, I'm gonna do two more examples, um, and these examples are gonna give us a slightly different result, um, but it's important that you see one of each. So let's go ahead and do the second example. All right, so for example two, I've got four X minus Y equals three and 20 X 
minus 5y equals negative 15. Now think back if you can and try to remember what was the first step to solving the last one. The first thing I needed to do was to put this in augmented matrix form. So I'm going to write this as 4, negative 1, and then 3, and 20, negative 5, and negative 15. All right, why don't we go ahead and multiply everything in the first row by negative 5. So I'm going to do times negative 5. So I'm going to get negative 20, positive 5, and negative 15. And then in the second row, I have 20, negative 5, and negative 15. Now I'm going to add them together. Remember, I'm trying to make a 1 and 0 in the first row. When I add them together here, something interesting happens. Um, I get 0, 0, and negative 30. Now, um, if we have an entire row with all zeros on the left and a number other than zero on the right, we know that there is no solution to this system because what this is telling me is 0x plus 0y equals negative 30. That is not possible. So we can stop this problem right here and write no solution because we're getting a statement that we know cannot be true. Now this doesn't typically happen, but it can sometimes happen. All right, let's go ahead and look at example number three. And this will be our last example on the video. We're gonna do the calculator examples in class together and I will put detailed directions in the stream. All right, so for example three, I've got six X minus three Y equals 15 and negative 2x plus y equals negative 5. Again, I want to put this in augmented matrix form. So I'm going to have 6, negative 3, 15, and negative 2, 1, negative 5. And again, my goal is to try to make it be 1, 0 on the left top row and 0, 1 on the left bottom row. All right. So I am going to times everything in the second equation by three. When I do, my first row is still six, negative three, 15. And the second row is going to be negative six, negative three, and positive, uh, let's see, positive 15? No, uh, negative 15. Okay, so negative six, negative three, negative 15. Now I'm going to add uh, the two lines together. What I do in my top row, I have zero, zero, and zero. And then in the bottom row, I have one negative point, uh, excuse me, I still have <laughs> negative six, negative three, and negative 15. Now, if I wanted to, um, I could divide everything in the second row by negative six. So I would have zero, zero, and zero. And then I'd have one. And then uh, dividing by negative six, I would have 0.5. Let's see. Um, let me just make sure up here because I think I did one of my signs wrong. This would be negative six. This should be a positive three here. And then positive three there. And then this would become negative 0.5 and then 2.5. So the fact that I have a row of zeros here tells me that I have infinite number of solutions. It also tells me that both lines are in the format x uh, minus 1 half y equals 2.5. But the fact that I've got this row here of all zeros is what is what is telling me that I have infinite number of solutions. So if one of the rows, uh, if one entire row is all zeros, then it means infinite number of solutions. Now, we are gonna talk in class about how to do all of this using our calculators, um, but it is extremely likely that on your next test, 
you are going to have to do one by hand showing your work. In other words, you could still use your calculator to check your answer, but you would have to be able to show your work doing the steps by hand. So it is important to know how to do it by hand as well. All right, so I will see you in class. Thanks, guys. Bye.